In this Off the Press this Monday morning, the program where we we'll take a look at our national dailies and try to make sense of it. With me this morning to do so will be in studio, uh, Ayeni, Annie Uvi. Good to have you again. Thank you. Good Welcome morning. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Nice right. to be back. All right. And also we'll be having Aisha sorry, uh, reviewing with us remotely from Berlin. Good morning, Aisha. Hi. Good morning, I Good morning. Okay. Right, good to have you. I have also with me uh, um, Anihu Viayani here in studio. So we'll be three of us, uh, uh, you know, reviewing the papers this morning. Hi, Ani. Hi, Ani. <laughs> All right, so we shall begin with the Punch newspaper. It will be displayed uh, for you, I believe. And it says, sacked employees to get monthly salaries for insured jobs. That's according to the insurers on page 20. And CBN prevails on banks not to sack workers. That story is on page 25 of the Punch newspaper. Cut interest rates to boost economy, says Tinubu. And that one also is on page 24. Now we have the pictures, picture of Leah Sharibu's 17th birthday. Leah Sharibu's parents accuse federal government of deceiving Nigerians. What more do we need to know about that girl? The story is on page 8 of the Punch newspaper. The big story for the Punch newspaper is 80% of Kano coronavirus sample positive. That's according to President Buhari's panel. That story is on pages 2 and 6 of the Punch newspaper. Most of the strange deaths in Kano caused by COVID-19, says Gorzo, Lagos draws timetable for workers' re resumption, food markets, and others. Um, and if you scroll down a little bit, we have picture story. Oshun Ill illegal mining, 17 Chinese monarch and others face prosecution. You can see the picture story there. And the story itself is on page six of the Punch newspaper. And the top, uh, bottom rather there, it says, um, um, Fire me names Amotekum board members, uh, complaint uh, board chair also on page 9 of the Punch newspaper. 23 Nasara, 23 Nasara assembly members quarantined as member dies. That one too is on page 8. Uh, Jam remits 7 billion naira to federal government for 2020 UTME on page uh, 17 good to know that there is some sort of some sort of income coming to the federal government and again of course we have the covid update at uh, the very top there um, we are now in nigeria at 2558 confirmed cases uh, we have thankfully 400 that have recovered discharged unfortunately 87 persons are dead and um, um, as a, uh, globally, we are 3.5. You can see the figures for yourself of confirmed cases in the world. Now, I would like to begin with you, Annie. Um, you've you've heard the headlines. I don't know which one is catching your attention, but I'm looking at 80% of Kano uh, coronavirus samples positive, and just two days ago, or yes, two days ago, the governor relaxed the lockdown. The lockdown. Kano is say? densely um, populated, and it has been like that for many, many years. Kano also has the problem of the drug addiction that has got to do with the children. They have, they have that. They have the rising poverty levels also in Kano. You have a lot of people that are also out of work, and you have people who are very stuck in their traditions and their ways. There are quite a number of people who have lived day to day only according to their traditions and their customs. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that government actually, what is happening in Lagos, in every other part of the country, there are places in Kano that those, those sorts of issues actually are not so well celebrated. And that's why you can have an environment where they say that people are not taking it seriously. Right. Why? Because the matter that is being talked about is not yet something that is within their purview. It's not what they are thinking about. Mm. If it, uh, it is not their concern whether the country is eating Christmas turkey or not, what they eat every day is chicken. So right. they are going to concentrate on their chicken. They will not worry about turkey. Mm -hmm. But right now, for us to see that 80% have tested positive, it, it shows that there has been an ignorance, that there's, ignorance has been at a level that right now needs to be looked at in mm -hmm. Kano and lack of um, intelligence, understanding, is now at a level that now needs to be looked at in Kano. If it was ignored before, it's not time to ignore it anymore. Mm -hmm. If 80% of them are positive, 
And just over the weekend, the governor of Kaduna was confirming that some of the Almagiris that were taken out of Kano into Kaduna that have been isolated, the numbers there, about 12 or less than 20 of them that have tested positive, have actually been the numbers that have spiked up the numbers in Kaduna. Mm -hmm. So it just shows that there, there, is a, there is a lot more to be done about enlightening people in Kano, taking deliberate steps to make sure that people actually get the message of what is happening. And like the gentleman said just before me, it's a good thing that the government and SCDC have decided and um, Dangote, um, good, and I'm sure some other individuals would have risen up to the challenge to actually raise up actual testing centers and also what is going to be done after that as treatment for those who are positive mm -hmm. so that they can get out of, um, out of it. Right. Uh, Aisha, I know you can hear me. Aisha? I can hear you. <laughs> right, right. I mean, you are not in Nigeria, right? But are you worried about our leadership style? Uh, because initially, we were not hearing anything from Kanu. It looks like, well, nothing is happening. You know, uh, you know, the Commissioner of Information actually told us one time on this program that, no, everything is stable and normal. And just after weeks of it, not so long, we hear the governor himself saying today that Kanu is in trouble. Where did we get it wrong? Well, I think you've already alluded to some of which speak to governance. So for me, there are three levels in which we can look at the response of Kano in particular. I think in places, as you said, like Lagos, even the FCT, AKT, Ogo, we've seen a lot of um, good response, strong response. But in Kano in particular, I would use three things to say that this is the reason why they're, they're not doing so well. So the first, as you mentioned, is the governance one. They've just not been prepared. I mean, we've had the first outbreak of uh, coronavirus in Nigeria, I think at the end of February. We've been on a lockdown now as a country in terms of Lagos, FCT, and Ogun for over a month, mm -hmm. uh, with it just being relaxed from today. So Kano should have been on the alert. But obviously, Kano was not prepared. So if there was proper governance in Kano, they would have the... They would have been prepared for this eventuality. As we can see, even in Kaduna, they were, they were prepared. So that's the failure of governance one. Then the second one is obviously the failure in communication, which you've just pointed to. The Minister of in Commissioner for Information was not clear or made it seem like things were okay when they were not. So I think that's also one big thing. One is the communication within government itself. So how are the government of Kano dealing with the NCDC? How are they communicating within themselves? And then the other level of communication is how are they communicating with the citizens every day? How are they making them understand how you know, how important it is to practice physical distancing. We've been seeing on um, social media, it's not clear which particular parts of the north these videos are coming from, but we'll see young boys washing their hands into bowls and drinking water saying there's no coronavirus. So there's obviously been a failure of communication in terms of governments in many states in the north, Kano in particular, to let the citizens know how important this is mm -hmm. to practice social distancing, to wash their hands, to keep apart. So that's the other level. And then the last one is obviously the medical response, which is clearly, clearly missing. It's unfortunate that in this time of fake news and disinformation, it's it's very hard to say what somebody reads. So me here in Berlin, when I read things, I'm sort of suspicious. I'm like, is this the truth? Is this not the truth? So it makes it harder to be able to piece together a full picture. But for example, one of the things that I've read recently was how decimated Kano's public health system is with lack of doctors and obviously not being kitted with the proper PPE. So right now you're having to deal with a system that's already under structured, underfunded. And so you're like piling on this issue on top. And I think it's really a mistake for Kano to ease the lockdown while the numbers are going so high. They have not even experienced the type of structured lockdown that will say that an FCT, a Kaduna, or a Lagos have experienced. Mm -hmm. And now that they are giving us the largest numbers in the country, they should be the ones who are enforcing the strictest measures of, of lockdown. So to hear that they've eased this restriction with the permission of the federal government, I have to say that's really worrying. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. Uh, Annie is still here. Annie, I don't know which other story do you want to take a look at. Um, there's the CBN prevails on bank not to sack workers. Well, CBN prevails on banks not to sack workers. That, that, this is what the English would call a catch-22. Mm -hmm. That is, either which way you go. Yes, the CBN will prevail and the banks will now, be, now have to dig deeper mm -hmm. into their system. 
to now see that, okay, these people are not being fired. Now, looking at it from the perspective of administration, the truth is, the, the fact is this. The people who are taken into work were taken into work by a contract, mm -hmm. a contract that has been agreed upon between them and their employer. Let us not look at money and say, oh, but banks are making millions and making millions. Every single business has casualties. Right. Every single business has operational expenses that they do on a daily basis. Banks have been told pre uh, they've prevailed. The reality is this, is this sustainable? And even if they want to pay the salary of these workers, some of these banks spend more than 100 million naira every single month just on salaries alone. Mm -hmm. Is this sustainable? There is no economy in the world, there is no aspect of the world right now that has not been touched by what has happened with the coronavirus. Everybody all over the world, we are all at home, we are all taking safety measures. We are all taking protective measures to protect our lives. Mm -hmm. Now, Nigerian government does not have a system that supports the individual businessman or the businesswoman. The structure and, and systems that we have, the people are having to take their own responsibility. So now that they've said this, it's good news, but how sustainable it is, is it is the reality. And I will just say, for, this, for those who are employed by the banks, Take individual responsibility of your own life and what you will do with yourself after. Mm. All right. Uh, we will proceed to the Nation newspaper. And Aisha, I still want you to intervene on this matter. Can you hear me, Aisha? I can hear you. I'm okay. Here. So I'll take the headlines and then I'll come back to you. It's a CBN halts okay. mass sacks in banks. Uh, it's the same story that we're talking about. And that is on page four of the Nation newspaper. And the use of 10% of GDP as stimulus for firms and others on page uh, six, uh, how to steer COVID-19 action train by Adeola. Uh, that's the SGTV CEO giving tips there. That story is on pages two and three of the nation newspaper. And Oshun arrests 17 Chinese chief and others for illegal mining. Uh, that story, you will find it on page seven of the Nation newspaper, PTF, coronavirus cause of mass deaths in Kano, finally. And then Kano residents' nonchalant attitude worries federal government. Emir dies in Zampara. Nasara lawmakers' deaths uh, raises dust also. Lagos government to discharge pa patient uh, must self-isolate for 14 days. Okay, so that's any, anybody who's discharge from Lagos State from COVID-19 must go for another 14 days of self-isolation. And to the right there, we have the global figures. We are now at 3.5 uh, uh, confirmed cases uh, and then 247 deaths, that's globally, and 1.1 um, recoveries. Then in Nigeria, we, we are now at 2,558 2, uh, cases, confirmed cases. We have 87 deaths also and uh, 400 and something, over 400 and something uh, recovered. Now we have also, if you scroll down a bit, how CBN can boost production and investment by Tinubu, maybe we should begin to look at that. And JAM remits uh, 7 billion to federal government. Fire me names Amotekun Ko Commander. Uh, those stories you find on page 26 and page 27 of the Nation newspaper. Aisha, we'll go back to the story of CBN uh, halting the mass uh, sacks in bank. Uh, this morning, sure. we, we had an analyst, and his position was, well, um, he is standing with the CBN saying, yes, uh, no one should be sacked at uh, such a time. Uh, but, but he mentioned particularly that, well, this bank uh, whose uh, CEO had come out to say, you know what, we're going to uh, slash uh, the pay, uh, staffers would have to take a pay cut, including himself, and some will be let go at this time. He, but the, this analyst is concerned that we, the bank is not saying to us, well, in terms of figures, this is where we are. So we are really, really uh, running low as a result. Uh, we have to take this decision. Do you think that we should get more transparency? Should we uh, see more transparency from institutions like the banks? So it's not a question of, well, it's COVID-19 and so anything else can happen. Uh, should you expect that that uh, would happen or should happen? Ah, a difficult one. I mean, generally around the world, there's this push uh, more on a humanitarian 
uh, ethical basis where people are saying, look, you know, if I had someone working for me and they're not able to work anymore, um, I'll still keep paying them. People are, there are some people who are able to do that. But I think it's a bit difficult to force people to keep um, large groups employed. I think I watched that video and my sense of the video was he was talking about staff who typically are outsourced, you know, cleaners, drivers, Guards, usually I'm guessing that most banks don't have those people on their payroll per se, but they pay a third party for those services. So I don't think the CBN, to be honest, so there's two things for me. One mm-hmm. is uh, big government and my position on that. I don't like big government. I don't think the CBN should be able to tell privately owned or public companies what to do. If a company sacks their employees um, against the labor laws or against their own contracts, then this matter is for the courts. So you'd say to the employees or to their unions, go to the courts and hopefully you get justice there. But to have a CBN going down to say to people, to banks, so are they going to come down to a a small business, for example, uh, with three people employed or four people employed and say, you can't sack anybody? So I don't see that as the role of CBN right now, honestly. I think it's an overreach. Hmm. So there's a balance here. We do want people to be more humanitarian. We do not like the idea of people losing their jobs during such a hard time. But the truth is the world is not the same anymore. We can see that oil prices are low. Nobody wants to buy oil. There's low demand for oil. You can see that people like British Airways, they've been in the news that they're probably going to sack 12,000 people. Are you hearing the UK government telling the British Airways that they can't do that? They, they, it's, it's not their role. So, you know, there's, there's something, and I think it speaks to a larger thing about what kind of ideology uh, we have as a country. Are we capitalist? Are we socialist? Do we de- do we decide when we want to be capitalist? Do we decide when we want to be socialist? We have to our p- economic policies and regulation have to sort of make sense. Otherwise, we find that there's no confidence in the regulation. And this is why people can go behind the scenes and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Negotiate for different things for their companies or for themselves. So yeah, I think it's messy. We want to be kind. Uh, this is the time, I think I read Fala Diola's uh, speech or the, the, the action plan that he rolled out and he talked a lot about caring for each other. That's all very well and good. But at the same time, you cannot force a business to keep people employed. And if a business decides it wants to reduce its workforce, then the right thing for people who are unhappy with that to do is to go to court. Mm. And this is where you now ask how strong are Nigeria's labor laws? Right. Have, they been, have they been revamped to take care of the small man or the middle man? Mm. Or have they remained the same since colonial times? Mm-hmm. All right, Aisha, good interventions there. Uh, we'll quickly take the Guardian newspaper in the interest of time. Uh, mass sacking in banks averted. I mean, all papers are talking about that. As CBN waits in, that's the big story for the Guardian newspaper. It's there on the front page. And uh, just below it, doctors and pharmacists disagree over easing uh, COVID-19 lockdown. Also on the front page, but it's continued on page six. Uh, the rest of the story will be there. I will just quickly say, um, Annie, please intervene on this bit of the COVID-19 is in the lockdown. You are in Lagos, for instance, yeah. and also in Nigeria. What, what are your thoughts? Are we ready? Well, I, don't, I don't think we are ready. We are not ready as a people. And unfortunately, government is now at a position that in between what you call the rock and the hard place. Right. The economy needs to keep moving. People are getting restless. And there is... Um, the youth are getting restless and there are backlashes that are happening. Government is being pressured here and there. And other countries are saying, okay, we need to open economy, we need to open economy. Unfortunately, this shows how fragmented, this also shows how weakened, this it also shows how frail our system of governance is. And as, a, as Nigerians, really, this is time for us to really, really think straight on what exactly we want governance to be for us. Mm. When we say that we are thinking about going out to vote for somebody, what exactly are we voting for? The temporary, the temporary palliatives that we get during the election time, maybe people are getting more businesses, maybe people are giving more money, whatever it is, they are all temporary compared to the reality that faces us after the elections. And this COVID-19 has shown us that reality smack in the face. Mm -hmm. No, we are not ready, but what I will say is this, let us pay attention and raise up the, um, the bar for our own personal responsibility and safety at this time. All right. Aisha, sorry. I want to say thank you very much for joining us this morning and keep safe where you are. Thank you, Amaka. Thanks for inviting me. You keep safe too. All and right. you too, Annie. Nice thank to be on the show. Thank you for inviting me.
Okay. Right. And Annie, thank you also for being with us live thank in you. the studio. And that's where we will call it a wrap today on Off the Press. Remember, we do this Monday to Friday here on Plus TV Africa. The time is 8.30 a.m. I am Amaka Okoye saying, please stay safe out there. <laughs>